All right, so I'm working on this project with Nan Light. So we, they've sent me some lights to be able to use and we're excited to be able to use their underwater range of lights. So what they have is the Parvo tubes. So they are long LED tubes, which come uh, in a bag like this. So this is four of those Parvo tubes. And let me show you what they look like. So these tubes, these are the Nanlite Parvo Tube 230X. And these are a four foot long tube, which has got LEDs in it and, and lights up. So let me turn it on and uh, show you what that looks like. So decent amount of light comes out of these guys. Nice soft light. And there's lots of controls you can do. They're, they're RGB, so you can change the color uh, on them, which is quite cool. These are great, but they don't go underwater. They're not waterproof. Um, so we do need to sort of put them in something to be able to use them under the water. And the beauty of what Nanlite has done is they've built their own housings to put these inside of. So let me show you that. These are their underwater housings. It's very simple, it's just a tube. Uh, and it is rated for 10 meters, which is 30 feet. So it gives you a lot to play with. You can use these in your swimming pool, in the tanks, or even in the open water, as long as you're not over 10 meters. Now, the way they work is it's just a simple screw top with an O-ring on there. So the light goes inside here and then screw it back on. There's an O-ring, make sure that's nice and clean. And then once that's all screwed together, this is now waterproof. Now, what I like to do is keep the control panel to the top of, of the tube. So close to the opening um, and always make sure it's turned on before you put it in the housing. So turning that on. And the reason I like to keep the controls at the top is that this is where the Bluetooth transmitter or receiver is. So if you want to connect to this with your phone, you uh, can have this actually sticking out of the water because Bluetooth doesn't go through the surface of the water. So you can turn that on, just turn the brightness down till we're ready. So once this is on, it is connectable to the Bluetooth, which means that we can turn it on, but have the dim down. And then once we're ready, we can connect to it and control it with the phone. Nice and tight, nice and solid. Now, the other thing is that these tubes, they are buoyant. So if you put this in the water, it will float. So the way to combat that is by having something to, to kind of hold it down. What these come with is a nice quarter 20 threaded slot at both ends. And what that means is you can take a, a nice baby pin, screw that in, and now you can connect that to that something. Now, I like to use C-stand arms, combo arms, to hold this in the water from the side of the pool. It stops it from floating around and, and kind of changing position, also twisting in the water as well, because the light only comes out of one side. Now, the other thing that's available for these lights is a stand. So we can screw it onto this stand and it'll actually stand up by itself. Under the water though, this is kind of only just heavy enough to keep that whole tube under the water. If I want to uh, have it a bit more stable, I need to add weight to it. And so what I've done is with that quarter 20, is I've got these threaded weights. Now these are from Small Rig. Uh, they're usually used for um, steady cams stabilizers to put it on it to counterbalance but these fit on here pretty perfectly so i can just screw these onto the bottom and just add some weight so what that's going to do is offset the buoyancy of this to be able to let it to float nicely or sink nicely depending on what you want it to do and you can just add more of these depending on the weight that you need So to start with, we're going to set up the Nanlite Forza 720B, which is a nice LED bicolor light. We're going to throw the Fresnel lens on the front of that with the barn doors, just to be able to make sure we can control where that light goes. And then by setting it up behind the pool, we're going to make it our backlight, which is going to give us a lot of drama once we actually get into the water and see what's happening. This is me just putting the black fabric in the water, which is going to help to hide the fact that we're in a swimming pool and give us a bit more of a black void. And you'll notice that I've got a black tarp over the pool to control the light. 
and then we're putting the black wall on the side there to stop any of the direct sunlight from getting in. So what I'm doing here is balancing the buoyancy for these four foot parvo tubes just to help them to stay in the water. And once I've got those small HD weights on the bottom of it, that will help it to float in the water there. And then we're just going to throw the C-stand on to just keep it from floating around the pool. This is our first model, Brian. He's quite a character, especially underwater. And we're actually going to do some photos for him today for a TV presenter role. So he's going to be hanging out, doing some nice acrobatics under the water there, playing around with the microphone and just making the most of the weightlessness of the water. You can see what we've done here is I've put the two parvo tubes behind him and they're not so much lighting up the scene at this point as making a special effect. So we're using them as a prop in the back of the shot there to sort of give it uh, a totally different look than usually would be underwater. Same with Lennon, our second model. She's a comedian, so we're doing some quite out there shots for her. And her brand is very pink, so we've really taken those lights and changed the color of the LEDs to make them pink, which I was doing from the shallow end of the pool just by using my phone and the NAND Link software to be able to change those quite instantly. Here you can see some of the shots straight out of camera. So you can see that those back lights look really impressive. The other thing I want to let you know is that I have used a couple of strobes on the surface just to balance with the NAND light tubes. So there is a, a strobe at the front and one at the back just to give us a nice balance in there. And then the parvo tubes themselves are actually just being special effects or props in the back. The white light of those tubes looks really great. And then when we change it to the pink for Lennon, it really changes the whole mood of the thing again. So, you know, being able to change that color to whatever you want by using the RGB LEDs inside these tubes really gives you a lot of control over how your scene ends up looking. So as well as the four foot parvo tubes, we're going to be using these six inch ones as well. So these are quite small, obviously six inches long, um, but they still put out a decent amount of light. Uh, let me turn that on and you can see. These are great for uh, small spaces. And in my work, I like to use a lot of props, a lot of lamps, a lot of TVs, um, and a lot of lanterns. So these guys are great for hiding inside something for lighting it up and giving it some sort of purpose so again with these they're not waterproof but man light have actually come up with a pretty nice solution which is a small little bag for it and um, so these bags are quite waterproof i've taken these down to 30 feet uh, 10 meters and they've been great so the light actually slips inside it you seal the top of it uh, and then it is totally waterproof the other nice thing about it is that you can still get access to all the controls. So through the bag, because it's soft, you can control everything, uh, change your settings, which is a nice change from the other hard housings for the four and eight foot long parvo tubes. So we're gonna use one of these today in our shoot. Uh, and because I am totally obsessed with lanterns, we're gonna be using one of these in our shoot underwater. I'm gonna be putting one of these lights inside here and, uh, and we'll see what the effect is like. All right, so our second setup here is going to have the parvo tubes taken out to the side. We've taken the strobes out of this entirely, so now we're just using the, the NAND light system to be able to light this scene. So we have the orange light at the back up there is from the, the Forza 720B. The blue light's on either side of those four foot tubes. And then we have a six inch tube inside the lantern for Brian to hold on to. And I've actually told him to, to turn that lantern so it faces towards him, so it lights up his face more than anything else. And again, here's some shots out of camera. These are totally untouched, so you can see everything that's going on there. And it's really nice to sort of see how much light is being thrown around by just these three lights around the outside and then that single light inside the lantern which is really a key light at this point lighting up brian's face and spilling out onto lennon as well i'll throw up the details for what the camera settings were but that's pretty much it quite a simple setup and really gave us some great results so i hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you on the next one